why the rich keep getting richer in the United States of America? USA, USA. Shout outs to CNBC, see what they got to say about us billionaires. World's first trillionaire by 2027. Musk is the closest person to the 13 figure mark. The biggest driver of Elon Musk's wealth has been Tesla stock. If you look before the pandemic, that stock was trading at below 50 bucks a share. Now it's at $230 a share. Some people think it could easily go to $300 a share if they have self-driving taxis, autonomous vehicles. But not all Americans benefit from stock market plays. Wealth inequality in the U.S. has significantly increased over the past 30 years. Federal Reserve data shows the wealth of the top 1% has grown dramatically, while the wealth of the bottom 50% has stagnated. In the early 1990s, the top 1% held about 46 now watch this guys. Now, when the stock market does accumulate wealth, it does help most normies because most normies retirement funds, pensions are invested in stocks and bonds. And so again, if the stock market does well, it helps you not in your immediate life, unless you invest and open up a brokerage account today, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, go Google it right now. Shoot, Cash App, Robinhood. I mean, there's massive amounts of platforms, but let's continue. Next, she's going to explain the amount of wealth. Now, in the 1990s, the top 1% owned about $4.7 trillion. In the bottom, $7.6 trillion, or 23% of the nation's wealth, while the bottom 50% had about $730 billion in equity, or 3.5% of total wealth. Fast forward to Q1 2024, the top one. So 3.5% of the wealth in 1990. Let's go. Fast forward. Percent share increased to nearly $46.1 trillion, or 30% of the total wealth, while the bottom 50% held $3.78 trillion, or 2.5% of. 2.5%. Not too bad in consideration of the amount, amount of wealth increase. Total wealth. The American system, which is an economy fundamentally driven by entrepreneurs and innovation, where you're rewarded for taking risk, that that creates growth for everybody. While others feel that wealth concentration can be harmful to society. So talk. Now again, wealth concentration. Guys, most normies are not getting wealth because they're taking their earned income, their annual income, their wages and salaries, and their outgoing is larger than their incoming. So they're spending more. They're not purchasing assets with the money they have been given or earned via a salary and wage in accumulating assets. That is entirely a personal choice. Those other people that you're comparing yourself to, the only difference between them is they purchase assets with cash, cash that they get from their job, cash that they get from their equity in their business, cash that they take from the equity of their home and invest into the market and buy more assets. These are the strategies and shout outs to my Asian Americans who take 40% of their annual income and invest it towards savings and investing. That's why they have good statistics versus the rest. Of a trillionaire is frightening. Billions of dollars of wealth translate into billions of dollars of power. A hundred years after the first billionaire, what has led to the concentration of wealth that could make the first trillionaire possible? And what does it mean for the U.S. economy? Elon Musk was named the richest man in the world in January 2021. He started 2020 worth about $28.5 billion and ended it being worth around $167 billion. As of September 2024, his net worth is valued at roughly $265 billion, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. One of the reasons that Elon Musk has grown so wealthy is not only because Tesla stock has gone up so rapidly, but also because the number of shares that he owns is growing rapidly. Over that five-year period from 2019 to 2024, that stock went up 1,300%. If that stock continues to go up 100% a year along with his wealth, he will get to trillionaire status by 2027. Tesla's stock rise during the pandemic wasn't necessarily tied to production or revenue growth alone. The stock of Tesla is now up 677% for the year. And that move has changed everything. It only plans to make half a million cars this year. But this new generation of stock pickers, they believe that Elon Musk is a genius and they want to stick with him as he takes over the world. 
people invest for all kinds of reasons. Some invest for very short-term reasons. Other people invest because they think this stock is going to be a good one and it's going to generate profits for years. For years and years to come. And then also most stocks are like that, but not only people just believe he's a genius, they actually just see the results of his work. I want to point that out because if you just think someone's a genius with no past performance, that's one thing. But if someone accomplishes such grand goals and milestones for you to still doubt is ridiculous. You guys put more hope in a basketball player who shoots hoops than you do an entrepreneur or, or innovator like Elon Musk. So, hmm, got me thinking what's wrong with people because they got all the confidence in LeBron, Kobe Bryant, and Stephon Curry, but they don't have no confidence in Elon Musk. It's more socially acceptable if I follow a LeBron James and Marvel at his accomplishments versus a Elon Musk, then it becomes you're a fanboy, but you're a fan of a person who shoots basketballs and nets. Years and years and years. Musk is in a unique position because of how he's compensated at Tesla. Elon certainly had a lot of other shareholders and his stake in the company was fairly low when they started out, but he has had these massive pay packages, the most recent of which was over $50 billion. That's $50 billion in pay, not- Look, watch, in pay, not just what he owns. Look, look, look what this guy's saying, which is inaccurate, but let's move. Just what he owns in the company and the value of that stock. And so- in so it's not pay, it's a compensation package. See, he should know that since he got a suit on, but net net, he has to pay for the shares at that agreed upon price. And it's called a stock award or stock option. So he's not getting cash handed to him 56 billion. He has to buy into the actual package and he has to purchase the shares and those shares valued currently on the market is around 56 billion but he's paying a different price that they agreed upon during that time he got paid minimum wage or excuse me he was paid minimum wage yeah elon musk was paid about 30 grand per year for the last five to six years this pay package comes after that and it's all based on performance it's not based on we like you and we're just going to pay you x amount of dollars unless you create money for the shareholders, which is $700 billion, which he created for shareholders, he gets paid 50 billion out of that. Sounds like a good deal to shareholders. Oh, shareholders, retail, the most retail investors, meaning normal people, and then also institutions, which is also the normal people's pension and retirement. Thank you and you're welcome. In addition to growing rich from his existing stock, he has grown rich every year from options that are part of these massive pay packages. We have never seen pay packages like this in corporate America where somebody is given, if they meet certain benchmarks, a $50 billion payday. And so that has actually grown his share of the company over time to 13%. Some say based on current options, he could get to 20%. So one of the things that helps him reach trillionaire status is that Tesla stock grows, but also his ownership of the company grows because of these massive and unprecedented options. Neither Tesla nor SpaceX representatives responded to CNBC's request for comment. Usually when we think about the Forbes 400, we think about them owning about three or 4% of the total wealth in the economy, which is already quite large and quite outsized, but this would be an order of magnitude difference for one individual. Whether or not it comes to fruition, I think depends on a lot of things happening, particularly what is the value of the businesses with which he has associated himself. Musk made his wealth through equity in the major companies he's led, such as PayPal, Tesla, and SpaceX. This is a pretty typical wealth story for the 1%. If you look at the list of the richest Americans, you know, whether we're talking about Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, the reason people get super rich is they start a company and they grow that company. And the reason that company keeps growing and growing is producing something valuable that people want. Wealthier individuals typically have larger portions of their assets invested in the stock market, while middle income households tend to have more of their wealth tied up in real estate. The wealthiest 1% of Americans. And again, guys, the reason that is, is because in the past you didn't have access like you have access today 
to the actual stock market. It was a little bit harder, but now with the creation of technology, IOT, information of things, you guys have access to the same markets and can invest the same way that you invest in your 401k. Actually, 401ks is a 100% increase that corporations pay for. So here you go, paying into your actual pension or your 401k IRA, and you get a 100% profit and gain every time you put money in because it could have that match. If you have a 4% match or a 100% match up to 4%, all that money is matched by the company. The company is paying a hundred percent return for you each time you put a dollar in the company puts a dollar in that's a hundred percent gain you do that for 20 years with different companies because normies are going to complain i can't work at the same company again the wealthiest one percent of americans own nearly 50 percent of all stocks and watch this this is funny because a lot of you normies still own stock watch own nearly 50 percent of all u.s stocks while the bottom 50 percent of americans hold about one percent of all stocks so they said the bottom 50%. See, they're going to see, you see, they skipped across all the other Americans, right? That's about 49% of Americans they skipped over. But the bottom 50%, that's not a good example. Stocks, Watch this. Mid 2024. About 58% of families own stock in 20. So 58%, this is talking about all Americans. 58% of all Americans, they own stock, including passive investments like retirements in 2022. Hence why they skipped over. The 49 and then just went to the bottom 50. 2022, either directly or indirectly through passive investments such as retirement accounts. And, and again, if you're the bottom, more likely you don't have good financial habits. That's like me saying the bottom of the 50% best NBA players or NBA players, the bottom 50 have lower scores. Like, yeah, they probably do. They're the bottom 50 of the NBA. Why would they have higher scores and higher stats? Why would they be the best players? Like they do LeBron numbers, but they're the bottom 50 doesn't correlate. Wealth inequality is very much driven by the prices of different types of assets. And so shout outs to cash app that allows you to buy assets for a dollar regardless of its price. One of the things that will cause wealth inequality to go up as measured by wealth concentration is the stock market. And the stock market has done well, but other assets, especially housing, has also done quite well. House values go up. That tends to raise wealth in the middle of the distribution, which offsets some of the gains that are happening at the top. So there you go. Americans are doing great because good amount of them own different assets like real estate, which has been doing extremely well I rest my case. Most Americans' wealth is in home ownership, with more than 66% of families owning their own home in. So you guys own stocks, representing your retirement accounts. 58% of you guys do. Then 66% of you guys own your home, which has tremendous amounts of wealth. So again, you 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 continue There's to fail. New you continue to not deliver, man. Nobody cares about your tool, man. Okay. Now we're going to get into the last part, the taxes, because taxation without representation is just ridiculous. But here we go. Let's see what they say. We're not going to spend much time. We're almost closing out on the video because people don't have the time to watch 30 minutes. Okay. Changes in tax policy have made it much more difficult to tax the rich. There are many more exclusions, many more ways to get around paying taxes. Those same changes are what lead to a buildup in unrealized capital gains. Capital gains are the profits someone makes once they sell an asset, such as stocks or real estate. We should think about taxing unrealized gains and other policies like that. Many people, like Musk, are probably going to die with very substantial unrealized capital gains. And the question is, do we allow those unrealized capital gains to pass untaxed to the next generation, or do we... Yes. And then also too, Elon Musk paid the largest tax bill in all of human history. Yeah. He forgot about the 11, 11, what is it? 11 billion, 11 billion. He paid in taxes just off a tweet. He asked the people, Hey, do you think I should pay my taxes? They said, yes. Okay. He sold and paid 11 billion in taxes. <laughs> Impose something like a tax on gains at, at death. So I think we need to do a better job of taxing the income while it's taxing the people while they're dead. It's being earned. 
and that now he wants to tax it while it's being earned involves changes in tax law and eliminating some of these loopholes that have been put in place over the past quarter century and i told you guys look this is not a, a loophole or anything of the sort if i have assets and some of my assets like tesla stock doesn't pay me dividends i don't live off of that but i can borrow against it but i'm charged interest so also i have to pay interest to it like i don't just get to borrow against it for zero money like they give me back the money if i sell it then i pay some tax rate but at the same time the actual money that i borrow is an interest rate they're charging me for that money and i have to pay it back or I have to figure out how to multiply my money. So unless I multiply my money and increase my net worth, I'm going to be screwed. Or unless I sell at some point to pay back the debt, I'm going to be screwed. Or unless I create another investment opportunity that adds more value to the marketplace, I have to pay back the debt, just like you have to pay back a mortgage. So it creates more obligations and more responsibility for me to utilize that capital in a effective and efficient way that's going to pay me back a return so I can pay back the loan. And I have to pay back it. It's not like I get the money and it's forever and ever and ever, and nobody ends up paying their loan ever. No, I have to pay the loan back. So again, poor people are just trying to figure out ways to steal money. That's it. Someone else in their financial budgets, they want to dig into that and figure out how do I get more money when the statistic is, right? The top 50% of income earners pay 97% of all taxes in the bottom X. I think it was the bottom 50%. Those guys pay around 2.3%. Y'all don't pay anything for the most part, the top 50% of people out here working their butts off paying all the taxes. Elon Musk paid the largest tax bill. Poor people get exclusions from paying taxes. What assumption could be that it's only because of the tax code that these people got rich, which is absurd. They got rich because they built a company and spent a lot of time building that company. You have to create valuable products. That's why those people got rich, not because of the tax code. And any big change you make, you have to think, will that change the incentives in the system? So I would be careful making small changes. It's not surprising that in this election cycle, the theme of taxing the wealthy and taking some of what they have to help those who have less has become very prominent, especially among Democrats and vice presidents. And see, that's just stealing. And then again, America is a constitutional republic because it protects the majority from stealing from the minority, like, or anything else that's a violation of someone else because they're not the majority. See what? people are attempting to do is to be commies and fascists and say, Hey, because we have the numbers, we can steal from you. Like, Hey, you created that company. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to steal all this money. Hey, you've been paying people wages. Yeah. Hey, they have a 401. Okay. Yeah. Do they have dental? Yeah. Do they have vision? Yeah. They have all these benefits and they're getting paid. Oh, well, they didn't make do with the money. Oh, they're living check to check. Well, what are they doing with their funds? Oh, it's none of your business at the same time. I'm my own adult. Don't ever ask me what I'm doing. And then at the same time, hey, I want more of your money though. What you doing over there? I want more of this. I want more of that. So they're just thieves. I'm telling you, the normal people are just thieves. That's it. President Harris. So one of the things that she has proposed is to tax what are called unrealized gains. And so what the Harris campaign has said is, look, it's not fair that because your wealth grows in value and you can borrow against that, that you never pay taxes. Whereas the teacher, the firefighter, they have normal income and they have. And, and they can change that. See the teacher, the fighter fighter has normal income, but can purchase assets. The teacher is no, it's no rule against the teacher purchasing an asset. And when the teacher portfolio ends up being 700,000, she's not going to appreciate getting taxed. She's not going to appreciate somebody taxing her on the money she's been putting up and saving for retirement. That's an unrealized gain. So if she opens up that 401k or that pension, let's start taxing their pensions too. And on top of that, if she decides to open up a brokerage account, let's tax that also. The teacher would not like that and she would revolt. So there's nothing against the rich that the average people can't do also. She can go out also and create SpaceX.
the ultra rich. We need to tax corporations. That's one of the most powerful ways to reduce inequality. That guy looks like a commie and he probably comes from a failing country. So I just want to mention that, right? Like we got people up here coming from failing countries and trying to implement their failing country policies in a country that is not failing. And that while the average American saved on taxes because of the legislation, the savings was disproportionate. A middle income taxpayer saved about $900 by 2025, whereas the top 1% saved about $61,000. We're going to be seeing the expiry of many provisions of President Trump's tax cuts for the rich and for corporations. That arrives in 2025. That's a huge opportunity to address the long-standing problems with our... He, 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 he comes from the UK, it sounds like, and the UK is losing. So again, let's take loser strategy from the loser UK and implement it in the United States. Get real. There's a disconnect between what someone is really earning, what their income is and how much they're paying in tax. Because how much they're really earning, that's what determines how fast their wealth is going to grow. Elon Musk, if his wealth is truly going up $200 billion a year and his income is nothing, it's zero, that tells us we have a real problem. No, because he's creating wealth. He's creating more jobs. He's creating more factories. The shares are worth more in the stock market, but if you tax him, then he has to sell more shares and then therefore taking more interest and ownership that he has out of the company, leaving it to what you would like to call evil corporations and big banks to gobble up. It makes zero to no sense. Plus, why are you in his pockets like that? You're taxing income, okay? And he invests his majority of his money, unlike you. You decide to take care of only you and your family. Hold on, put me on the big screen. I'm finna go in on normies. Thank you very much. You are selfish. You spend your money on your family only. Elon spends it on your community, on your state, in your country. You don't. You create zero jobs. Well, I'm a small business. You create a small amount of jobs. Well, I'm a medium business. You create a medium amount of businesses. He creates large, ultra galaxy large. If he decides to go buy yachts, helicopters, and Lamborghinis, then he shall be taxed appropriately. But he does not. He goes out and does what? Build more companies, create more values. They give him more money because he has proven his ability to properly allocate capital. I find it funny that people on the right and people on the left say government is incompetent, but then want to tax people who've proven that they are competent with capital allocation, meaning making good investments and actually having large returns. You want to take money from them and put it in an entity like the government which you say and make claims that they don't have the ability to appropriately allocate the funds. Make that make sense. You're just a thief disguised as a Republican or Democrat. You're just a thief underperformer disguised as someone with moral high ground saying that those people are evil because they skirt and avoid the tax law. If you read, the tax law allows them to have reductions. And it's not just if you have 50 billion. If you have 50 million, it is if you are an American, period. You have the same tax deduction strategies available to you. Go read it. No, I'd rather fish. I'd rather watch the Kobe Bryant game. That's your problem. So get out of here and stop trying to steal people's money because you're a loser and underperforming. Get better at financial literacy. I'm out.